talking today about trial mining at the Bliner Diamond Project. We're now a one project focused company uh, and that reflects our name change to Gib River Diamonds. The project area is just about 100 kilometres to the east of Derby. Uh, it's along the Gib River Road, which uh, the government very kindly maintains for us, and it's very well sited. Now, probably the best way to get a feel for the project is to take a look at this corporate video, which uh, shows some of what's going on at the site. So the takeaway from that is that we have these alluvial channels which drain from that mine site there. We've got over 35 kilometres of strike within these channels. There's been over $30 million spent on these channels previously. We are the beneficiary of that data. And on the basis of that data, we've been able to peg mining leases over these channels, over the best parts of these channels, the shallowest, the most prospective. The mining licenses are granted, the native title is done, the Aboriginal heritage clearances are done, all of the mine permitting is done, the thing is shovel ready and ready to go. So that's the position that we've taken this project to. Um, and that, as you can see from this uh, site, uh, you can see from the surface exactly how far away we are. You, we've got 35 kilometres of strike of these channels, and these are the alluvial channels that shed from the previous uh, Allenvale 9 diamond mine, which is originally the, la the produced 50% of the world's fancy yellow diamonds uh, up until 2015 when it closed. Now, previous work in the area includes uh, some extensive trial mining uh, of, of two pits, such as, uh, one, this is one of them. Over 40,000 cubic metres were removed uh, and treated from these pits, and resultingly four uh, nearly 1,500 carats of diamonds were mined. Now, that is a significant quantity of diamonds as, and has enabled us to get a modern valuation on that parcel. Our valuation um, is now 389 US dollars a carat, which is significantly higher than the original valuation at 210 US dollars a carat. If you include the currency changes as well, back then the currency was $1.10 Aussie to the US, it's now 73 cents. There's a, a very meaningful change in the economics of this project. So you can see from that excellent image there that that basically took a cross section a random cross-section virtually across the Terrace 5 channel. Every sample they took from that hole came up with diamonds, and indeed that entire channel is diamondiferous. Our aim is not to just take out a sort of randomised channel. Our aim is to find the high-grade areas within those channels, or within that channel, and then pick out the highest-grade spots within those areas and to mine those. So we've got a fundamentally different way of going about it, but the economics and the currency are working in our favour. The um, diamonds themselves are exceptional quality stones. You saw some of them in the video. I've got a few here. If you want to sit, join me at the booth later, you can take a look, including, uh, including what was found, that 8.4 carat fancy yellow diamond, which uh, I'm quite sure nobody's uh, wives would complain about if they brought that home tonight. Um, the key to these stones is the fancy yellow color. Uh, the previous producers at Kimberley is the same stones that we're going to get. Um, had these fancy yellow diamonds and Tiffany's had the offtake agreement for them. They are exceptional quality, they're exceptional grade, they're the top stones in the world and they're unique. Now we would be the, since the closure of Allendale, we would be the only source of these diamonds in the world and it provides a significant moat around our co company and around our project and it uh, has generated considerable interest amongst Diamantaires um, and that, that uh, continues to happen as I travel to Hong Kong next week and on to PDAC after that. That's chasing up interest from Asia. So the key to the Bliner alluvial diamond mining or trial mining is it is shallow, it's simple and it's low cost. There are a number of factors that have gone into this. The source of the diamonds being one of them. If you look at the, it's difficult with alluvial diamonds because you need to in, instead of, by the time you've got a jork resource on alluvial diamonds, you've effectively mined them. They're, they're, they're very high value and very low grade. So you take bulk samples, and when you get bulk samples that are high grade or economic, you mine that area until it ceases to be so, and then you move to the next area. So it's done slightly differently. We're working this through exploration targets based upon the geomorphological uh, studies of the area, and also on the previous grades and the previous geology and the extensive uh, work that was done previously. But the key to it, I allude again, is to the high-grade material. 
we, on our exploration target, we believe we can find material, we're targeting material between 2.3 to 4.1 carats per cubic meter. Now, at Argyle in the alluvials, they were finding material that was almost double that grade in the early days of Argyle. Um, we believe that that grade uh, could be uh, present at Allendale, and I would invite you to go and have a look at the uh, data that backs up that exploration target. Should you find material that's 4.1 carats per cubic metre, that would be worth $2,000 per cubic metre. So I think you see if you treat 2,000 cubic, if you treat 1,000 cubic metres in a day, which we potentially could with the gear that we've got, that would be 2 million bucks in a day. Cost between 10 and 12,000 bucks to run the operation. So your potential is extremely high. The trick is you've got to find the high grade material. That is our mission within this company. How do we find it? Well, this is what the stuff looks like. They look like these high-grade potholes from Ocos. I've had a little bit of experience myself in mining high-grade potholes and high-grade diamonds. I spent about 25 years ago, I spent some years in the rivers of South America mining alluvial diamonds um, in a dredging outfit. Hopefully, uh, hopefully I won't get wet on this project, but um, that did give me good experience about how alluvial diamonds form, how you find them, and my experience from that was that you get about 90% of the alluvial diamonds in a river and about 3% of the river. They're not spread out like gold. They've got a much uh, lower specific gravity. So the key with alluvial diamonds, find those high-grade potholes, follow the geology, get the geology right, and then the grade will look after itself. And that's what we're doing, and this is how we're doing it. We're doing it through the ground penetrating radar that you saw in the video. We're doing it by defining these types of trap sites. And you can see here's the original pitting that was done without the benefit of any geophysics. Uh, and here is the actual target. And they missed it by about 30 or 40 metres. The difference between heaven and hell in alluvial diamonds is about 30 or 40 metres. The good thing about the GPR, the ground penetrating radar, is you're not only going to define the high-grade potholes, you can also define the general geology. You can pick up the most diamondiferous channels. We've defined these two which are, uh, again, other models for exploration. Once the geology falls out, you can tie the things together and you stand a much better chance of finding that high-grade material you're after. So we, we, in order to test this, we can also correlate the GPR against the original pitting and the original work, but we've also gone out ourselves and done some pitting. And here you can see me standing in one of the pits. You can see me standing there. Just above my head is the sand, the windblown sand. It's about 20 centimetres of cover. This stuff is at surface. Okay, you go, you, it's a free dig. You don't have to blast it. You just put it in the back of a truck, take it a few hundred metres away to your plant. It's as simple and as cheap and as uh, straightforward as you can possibly get in any mining operation. Intriguingly and interestingly and excitingly, we were also finding pothole trap sites and the kind of trap sites which I used to get very excited about in South America. They are here in this river, untested. This, all, all this ground, hundreds of, or millions of square metres of ground here was untested that we just discovered. It was previously logged as laterite. It's in fact lateritized gravel, as you can see from the beautiful rounded cobbles. Highly prospective. It's within those channel systems, never been tested. So we want to take a crack at that stuff too. It's completely, the, the 35 kilometres are, are very much underdone. There's some very good work done previously, but with limited resources. So. Let's have another crack at it with some more modern technology. This is what the mining's going to look like. Um, very simple. This is what they did. You just scrape it off, dig it up, back of the truck, into the plant. We've, and, and in fact, we've already got the plant ready to go. We've got no debt in the company. We built this and we put it together. Um, I, I sort of designed and put this together with the help of Tom Redcliffe, a, a well-known diamond consultant here. Um, you put the material into these um, feed bins, goes into the trommel, gets disaggregated, through a double screening system, and then um, the middle size fraction, which is where the diamonds are, go through the X-ray Sortex machine. We built that machine through second-hand Sortexes that we bought very cheaply in a sea container. It's been fully commissioned with a guy from South Africa coming over, and it's ready to go. All this equipment sitting in Welsh Pool, ready to be shipped up, the, up to the project site. Um, so we're fully permitted, shovel ready for bulk sampling and trial mining, which is our aim. So we are a small publicly listed mine development company. We've got a market cap of 11 million. We've got one and a half million dollars in the bank. And the directors have got about 28% of the stock. 
of 20% of which is mine. We've got a lot of skin in the game, and we're very keen to make this happen. Um, I've got extensive diamond experience from the past that I alluded to, and our goals are quite clear. Okay, we want a bulk sample initially, and by June we can get mine, we can get diamonds re returned back to the company, and in the second half of the year we'd like to go into trial mining. So what do we need to do this? So we need some money, and that's what we're looking for. We need working capital to commence this diamond recovery operations. And for any of the potential investors or brokers here, if you can find a better bang for your buck, well, good luck, but we're ready to go. And we're ready to go to mining, once or trial mining, as soon as we've done the bulk sampling operations. We need a million dollars in capital, ex capital um, to, get the to get that machinery up there to big the, dig the TS tailing storage facility and to get the site works done. In operating capital, 1.5 million would give us four months of operating capital. Uh, for a total of two and a half million dollars. That will commission the plant, conduct four months bulk sampling diamond recovery work. It can be raised as de debt, equity, sh or, shares, or, shares in the, or shares in the project. So that's the Gibb River Diamond story. We uh, hope you'll come on board. We're very excited. I'm, I've already um, been up to Singapore at the latter half of last year, and now that the Chinese New Year is, is finished, I've got some Singaporean investors who are very interested in coming on board. I'm going to Hong Kong as well to see some uh, diamantes and some Chinese diamond interests there, and then on to PDAC after that. We're looking to raise the money in the next six weeks to two months, and if there's somebody who's interested in helping us to get this um, project up and running, get the trommel moving and get that dirt through and see what we've got, then come and see me at the booth. I'd like to, like to have a chat. Thanks very much.